In the previous two videos, we looked at the stomach and small intestine. Neither of these tissues had very many goblet cells. They were either none visible or very few, as we saw in the small intestine. We instead had to look at gastric glands and pits to identify the stomach, or for the small intestine, we had the presence of these finger-like projections called villi. Now, I think personally, the stomach and the small intestine are probably the two most difficult to identify. I mentioned the esophagus was the easiest, but I think the colon or large intestine is actually just as easy as the esophagus, despite the fact that it also has simple columnar epithelium. The colon is easy to identify because the giveaway is many, many goblet cells. You're gonna see so many goblet cells when you look at the large intestine. If you see a lot of goblet cells, you have the large intestine or the colon, however you wanna call it. So let's kind of talk about the general layers. Okay, we have mucosa just as normal. The mucosa is composed of three sublayers. We have simple columnar epithelium, and the key is you've got a lot of goblet cells. You can even see the goblet cells here in this um, actually fairly low magnification. Um, these little white cells interspersed within the simple columnar, these are all goblet cells. And so if you have goblet cells, a lot of them, you've got the colon. Of course, we're gonna have a lamina propria. We're gonna have a muscularis mucosa as well. Okay? And these pits, okay, right here, that are kind of like gastric pits, or gastric glands, except for the fact that you have tons of goblet cells, okay? These are actually called intestinal glands, right? Intestinal glands are also gonna secrete mucus in the same way that the gastric glands secrete mucus into the lumen, okay? Uh, again, the difference between them, this is clearly not the stomach because I have tons of goblet cells. I can't emphasize that enough. Deep to the mucosa, you're gonna have a submucosa, the large intestine also has a muscularis externa, which is going to contain circular and longitudinal layers. And then the deepest layer is going to be the serosa, okay, which is composed of simple squamous epithelium. We're not really going to look at this. So now let's take a look at the large intestine under the microscope. And the key that we're going to look at is the goblet cells. All right, so right here, we see one intestinal gland. This is an intestinal gland. Um, this gland is gonna be making mucus and secreting it onto the lumen of the small intestine, all right? And what I want you to notice here are all these goblet cells, all right? When we looked at the stomach, we did not see any goblet cells. This is the stomach right here. There's really no goblet cells here, all right? No goblet cells. So if you see this kind of gland, that's indicative of the stomach. When we have all these goblet cells, and it should be very obvious, this is the large intestine, or the colon, okay? And it doesn't matter where we go. I mean, it doesn't even matter if the intestinal gland is really that well put together, okay? We just see goblet cells, goblet cells, goblet cells, goblet cells galore, okay? That's pretty much what the large intestine is. You have a bunch of intestinal glands, which are gonna be composed of goblet cells. If you get one thing out of this video, it is goblet cells. If you have goblet cells, you have the large intestine, okay? So in some ways, the large intestine is about as easy to identify as the esophagus. Again, the esophagus was, of course, stratified squamous epithelium, the only one like that, but also the large intestine is the only one with this degree of goblet cells, okay? So let's actually zoom out. Um, so you can see, even from a, a much lower magnification, we can see all the goblet cells even from here, okay? Um, now, if we take a look at this, um, we're going to also have lamina propria that's interspersed between the intestinal glands, okay? And then this layer right here where I'm tracing with my mouse, slightly darker red region, this is going to be the muscularis mucosa, right? Of course, if we go deep to that, we've got all this submucosal up here, okay? So this, probably from right here down to right here, this is my submucosal region, right? If we go deep to the submucosal layer, we have the muscularis externa, which has two regions or two sublayers within the large intestine. We have the superficial one, which is circular, which is closest to the lumen. And then we have the longitudinal layer over here, which is furthest from the lumen or deeper. Right? So those are the major things with the large intestine. Right? Again, the giveaway with this, which would be indicative of the large intestine, are all these goblet cells. So let me take one more zoom in on this so you can see. So this whole thing is an intestinal gland. It secretes mucus. In fact, I think this sort of grayish stuff that you can see in the lumen of the gland, this is actually the mucus. 
This is actually mucus being secreted. That's kind of cool. Key takeaway is goblet cells. All right. Now, when we look at the large intestine, we clearly have this simple columnar epithelium. There's goblet cells, but the tissue itself that lines the lumen is simple columnar epithelium. There's one other thing I want to go over, and that's what's called the rectoanal junction. All right. So let's break that word down, rectoanal. This is where the rectum meets the anus. Right? Now, let's take a little look at the anatomy of the large intestine. So the distal part of it, we have the sigmoid colon. Okay? The sigmoid colon becomes continuous with the rectum. Okay? So the rectum is right here. Actually, look at this. The rectum is right here. This is really a storage site for feces. Okay? But the rectum is still considered part of the large intestine. It's made up of the same tissue as the other parts of the large intestine. The anus, which is all the way down here, in contrast, the anus is more similar to the esophagus. Okay? Um, we're not explicitly covering the anus here, but it's more similar to the esophagus. So what tissue would line the lumen of the anus? It would be the same as the esophagus, stratified squamous epithelium, whereas the rectum is going to be the same as the large intestine. The rectum is going to have simple columnar epithelium. So what I want to do right now is take a look at what's called the rectoanal junction. So this microscope image right here is going to show what's called the rectoanal junction. If I look at the mucosal layer right here, I can see kind of in this region, if I were to draw a line right there to the right of it, it looks a little bit different than it does on the left. So how about I zoom in right here and just show you something. All right. So if we look over here, okay, it's not great resolution, but this side is clearly the rectal side. This is the part that's similar to the large intestine. Okay? You can see here there's what appear to be intestinal glands. There's a bunch of goblet cells right here, and if you look at the lining, you can sort of tell that all the nuclei are on the same level with each other. This is our simple columnar. Okay? If we follow this around, though, so here's simple columnar, simple columnar, simple columnar, we eventually get to a point where it kind of appears that it turns into stratified squamous epithelium. So literally right here, we wanted to be very precise. This is the rectoanal junction. If we were to draw a vertical line right here, on the right side of it, this would actually be the rectum because this contains the tissue that's more similar to the large intestine. In fact, the rectum is sort of part of the large intestine. But on the left of this, this is stratified squamous epithelium, right? So this would actually be the anus over on the left side. Okay? So I just wanted to point that out also to illustrate the point, help you differentiate between the various tissues. This is where the rectoanal junction would be. All right? But again, the major focus of this is really just understanding the large intestine, the key takeaway, goblet cells. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.